Okay, LED light bulb review time. This is called a Nico. And what's exciting about this bulb is you can't tell that it's an LED light bulb. It's a glass envelope, uh, obviously frosted, and uh, it looks just like an incandescent light bulb, which is pretty exciting because a lot of light fixtures actually uh, have exposed bulbs. And some of the uh, sort of modern marvels that are out there are pretty plasticky looking and uh, don't really show up that well. Uh, this vendor has obviously paid attention to that, and they produce a bulb that essentially looks like a light bulb. So, I want to see what's inside this. Okay, hmm, glass envelope. Well, I'm just trying to try scoring around the base here and uh, give me a tap and see if I can just break the shell gently. Ah, that kind of worked. All right. Okay, um, obviously a power supply buried inside of here and uh, a series of emitter rays uh, attached to it. How neat, uh, they've blown a glass envelope around uh, these uh, relatively delicate electronics. Uh, that's what really is interesting about the LED market right now is just the incredible variety of construction techniques. So um, this vendor has obviously achieved a real traditional look, and uh, but inside uh, it's a little more regular. Uh, these of course are uh, metallized substrates with some LEDs on them. Uh, very thin wires connecting them together, and uh, we'll pry those off, and uh, we'll dig into the base here and undoubtedly find uh, an AC to DC power converter. Okay, going a little further, uh, they're epoxied on. I had to use a hammer to actually uh, get them off. I presume this is going to be a, probably a thermally conductive epoxy as well, and uh, just a, a little square uh, a substrate with uh, three LEDs uh, on each one for the sides, and the top has a unique circuit board with uh, a foreign top. Okay, I was wrong. Uh, I thought this was plastic, but no, it's um, it's ceramic. Wow, how neat. Uh, obviously a little power supply hiding in there as well. Okay, this is a little AC to DC converter that's uh, in the base there. It uh, looks like a fairly straightforward topology. Uh, there's a capacitor here, I presume for snubbing out uh, noise, a smoothing capacitor here. A inductor here. I suspect it's a non-isolated design. That's probably not a huge problem here given that it's got a glass envelope all around it. Uh, it looks like a single uh, controller I see here. Uh, just for completeness, uh, the bulb uh, was 3000 Kelvin. Uh, there is a 5000 Kelvin available on the shelf uh, that uh, looked identical, same price. Uh, in terms of its uh, performance, that's 400 lumens. That's about a 40 watt equivalency drawing 5 watts. That's pretty competitive. That's about 80 lumens per watt. Not too bad for 2014. Um, a, a higher than a normal life, uh, 35,000 hours, most bulbs I see are about uh, 25,000, so uh, certainly all very class competitive uh, numbers. Okay, let's talk about flicker. A light bulb here, of course, mounted and shining onto a solar cell. The solar cell converts light back to electricity, and if you were to look at the output of an oscilloscope, you can quickly uh, determine whether the bulb uh, is producing any flicker in sort of that 60 or 120 hertz range, which is perceptible by uh, the human eye. Uh, this one doesn't. This is uh, basically switching noise we're seeing here. Uh, and uh, there is uh, no flicker on the bulb. Okay, uh, this polar graph just shows how the light comes out of the bulb that was uh, situated here in this orientation. And this is a good graph. This is a good emulation of an A-shaped light bulb. Good side loads, nice flat front. Uh, just excellent. Uh, somebody actually uh, did a, a nice job in designing this light bulb.